Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Radically Loved Radio. I am joined today by literally the best woman on the planet, and uh, Lauren Zander is here with us and gracing our presence. We've not had her on the show. We've done a couple of Facebook Lives, but we've not had her on the show in, it's been a year, I think, yeah, and we're really excited to have her on because we're in the middle of Mercury fucking retrograde. And we need her help with a couple of things that you, the listener, and now we have video. So if you're listening to this, go to YouTube, check out the video. Um, Some of your questions that you've been sending us, we, we needed Lauren's expert advice. So here she is. Everybody welcome, Lauren Zander. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me. You know how I feel about you. I know. I love it. I would I would follow I don't you get, around. I would be I, like your little, your little lap dog. I'd be happy to do anything you want me to do whenever you want me. Oh my God. I'm, I'm on it. You. I'm on it. I'm on yeah. it. So thank you. And one of the things that this has come up and for the people that don't know, uh, Lauren is my coach. I've been working with her for the last two years and she has changed my life in more ways than I can count which I'm always grateful for. Um, One of the things that has come up in the last uh, couple months, people have uh, posted this on our Facebook group and have emailed the questions, mostly having to do about uh, around how we get out of toxic relationships. And Lauren, you and I have done work on this for myself personally. And I think it's one of the biggest topics that we tend to avoid because it's uncomfortable and depending on who the person is, mm. there's different ways of, uh, I don't want to say getting rid of them, but of dissipating those relationships. And I was hoping that you would be able to talk to us about the different types of toxic relationships. How yeah. do we know when a relationship is toxic and how do we get out of them? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> It's an expansive topic, right? Because you, yeah. you, there are toxic relationships at work, there are toxic relationships in your family, and there are toxic relationships in your own friendship or community of friends. And then there's ones that everybody knows about and ones no one knows about. And in your little head, I could make you make an Excel spreadsheet. Oh my God. Right. But even worse, you never have. Right. So why doesn't a human make a little Excel spreadsheet is because if you actually knew you had all those issues, you might have to tackle them one by one. So first off, um, I have met, I have never met a person that didn't need to do this, this like Excel spreadsheet. And I think it's incredibly healthy to do where you really look at your relationships and the quality of your relationships in your family friendships and work coworkers, employees. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I then break out relationships into different tiers, right? So your besties tier one, your tier two is like, wish they would be, could be, but not right. Like relocatable to tier one, but you'd have to spend a lot more time. You'd have to want someone else in tier one. Right, right. So so B tier is people you love, but don't get enough time with, or like there's an acquaintanceships, but it's D, like you care, right? So the, the, the party you'd have with 15 people, they probably won't make the cut, right? Your first 15 are in tier one, your next 40 could be in tier two. And then tier three is your relocation package. Oh, Okay. (laughs) And so anyone who's in a toxic relationship where you're not in love with the person or you love them once upon a time, oh, we went to high school, we were best friends in high school, but now, right? So tier three is people who you love that you think you want to keep in your life, but the relationship itself is not delicious, fun, and enhancing. Mm. That's a B or an A. Okay. A are your besties, your favorite, your most important people in your life. B are, they could make it an A, you just haven't had enough time, or you just, you know, it is what it is and you love them, but it's not that profound or an A. 
and yeah. C is where you put everybody else. So then if you hear what I just did, you can get that toxic relationships are the ones that you have to get rid of, mm -hmm. not relocation packages. Mm. Okay, so a relocation package would be as cute as it may sound to any of you. I have first cousins that I love, but they're like in tier three, right? I'm not getting rid of them. I used to play with them a lot more because we used to be children together and teenagers yeah. together and after college together. But now, you know, you know, right? So I'd have to have like a big 50th birthday party and then invite my cousins, right? But if you understand, they don't make the cut. Not right. because I don't even love them. And right. then there are people like a woman that I went to high school with who I love. We're not buddies. I'm not trying to be her buddy. I'm not even inviting her to that 50th, but I'm also like happy to be Facebook friends. Okay. Everyone, those are A, B's and C's. Now, toxicity. Oof. Toxicity. I feel like I'm going to take notes. Toxicity. Okay, so I will be very clear about what creates toxicity. What creates toxicity is a fear of telling the truth. If I told you, you hurt my feelings. If I told you, you stole my idea. If I told you that I, the meeting was supposed to start at nine and it's 9.15 and you don't even acknowledge that you're late, right? And anything you feel you cannot say to someone else that you wish you could say or need to say or feel pent up because you didn't say, that is literally what creates toxicity in a relationship. Mm. Anything you can't say that you wish you could say, and it's their fault, you can't say it. It's their fault. Mm. If I said it to you, Rosie, you'd hate me. And then you'd yell at me and then you'd fire me. And then, or if I told you the truth about your drinking habit, you wouldn't invite me to those parties and I get clients at your parties. Like, so there's a reason I can't tell you something. Mm. Any place you can't tell someone something that you're upset about or judging them for is toxicity. Okay, you're like, but they're judgments, Lauren. They're rude. Who am I to say she shouldn't have any drink she had to? Who am I to say she shouldn't be dating that guy? He's checking me out. Oh. Right? Who am I to say something? Yeah. And then you have, de then, see that dial? Now there's degrees of intimacy and in what you expect from tier one, tier two, and tier three. Mm. So again, what I have people do is make their laws they want to live by for tier one, tier two, and tier three of community, even if it's even if it's corporate, like a business community, tier one, tier two, tier three. Okay, so I really have people figure out all the places they're uncomfortable, can't say something, mm -hmm. and feel toxic because they can't. Or I've said something once and then it didn't go well. So now it's mm -hmm. toxic, right? So what makes something toxic is you can't get understood, you can't get heard, and you can't say something and make something change. Do you have any questions about all that? Yes. Because I, those are great. Those are really great descriptors of being able to identify when something's toxic. And so when, when it's somebody that you really love and care about and say they're dating somebody that is like shitty and that, you know, especially, yeah, like even, even shitty is me being nice. I mean, not that this, this is a friend of mine, right? Like not me. Um, no, definitely. I, I, I've, I've had friends and have friends right. uh, that are probably listening to this and Hi. Hey, Hey, and they're with somebody that is just, uh, bad for them. Like according to you, you want to just me, according to me, they are not serving, uh, in, in the best interest of even them themselves, like their own self. And yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a difficult thing because this is somebody that's a really dear friend of mine and my opinion really matters. Yeah. And if I were to say, Hey, this hey. person right. is, uh, I, this is how I feel. This is my opinion is that they're yeah. not serving your highest good. Yeah. Um, I think that it would, it would be more devastating to me because I know that he would never 
leave this person. That's the power you were entrusted with, mm. right? Like I will not, I have gotten dumped for telling the truth to best friends. That's not my best friend. Mm. My best friend wants me to tell them the truth. I'm right. right. Like who would pick me and hope I didn't tell them the truth. Right now. <laughs> right. That, that, that's just funny. <laughs> funny. That's just funny. Obviously everyone's more talented with dealing with me now that I'm heading for 50. Right. I don't have those people anymore in my life. Those some still right. are some still like are defective. <laughs> Right. right. Like I still have defectors. Like uh, okay. recently we had a, we had a friend in the community, right? Like around the community yeah. and th her boyfriend was going and telling people, watch this, was going around telling people that he had a no kiss, don't, don't kiss, don't tell, po kiss, don't tell policy. What? He's allowed to kiss on the chiquitas, but he's not, no one's allowed to tell. According to him, he mm -hmm. had a, kiss don't tell policy in his committed relationship oh got that okay it was a perfect plot then friend of mine goes do you think that's true i don't know if i think that's true lauren can you check and i was like yeah i think that's smart to check if you don't think that's true he's a little slippery. I don't know if she's so slippery and like, I don't know if she's from Polly town. Right. 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 Like, I don't know if she signed up for Polly and she don't right, right, right. Polly. Yeah. Guess what? What really? It was uh, two years of lying. Right? Oh, um, that I accidentally blew up. Okay. Ready? <laughs> yes. I want to hear how this accidentally okay. happened. <laughs> ready? Who stayed with the guy and dumped me? Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. I did it wrong. I shouldn't have done it that way. Scared I'm going to tell people their names. Da, da, da. Like not one name, not one way, not good luck trying to figure out who my, my 200 people community, which one it was. Right. Like forget, like I'm now this, right. And it really yeah. is. So, she could, so I, so you're like, how did you handle that toxic release? First of all, I told yeah. her, come back anytime. I'm sorry. You love him. I got you want to keep them. And I got on the bearer of the bad news and I got you're coming after me. So I even went after her coming after me, oh, coming after it yeah. and told her, I loved her. I wished her well. Whenever she wants to deal with me or deal with any of this, please come back. But obviously she has, you know, what, who she wishes I was that I'm not. Mm, and oh, I can respect that. Like you so wish good. I was. So okay. So in regards to your guy friend. Yes. You and he need better rules. So mm. I don't need you to tell him she sucks. I need you two to figure out if you have that kind of relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So do you, do you, you know, Rosie, if I hear something or smell something in your life that is not oh. making you happy, do you want me to call it out and come after it for you? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would okay. expect nothing less. Well, right. Like I'm not disguised. <laughs> right. You as a friend do not know what your policy is. Oh. And so he can say stuff to you about your marriage. And can you say stuff to him about his relationship? So everyone, if you haven't worked out your policies of intimacy, right? Even with your husband or Matt, like if I find people fighting or having problems, there's a level to which agreements just haven't been made. Like you're in charge of this. I'm never going to do that. I'll always do this. You'll do that. I'll be mad at you if you do this. Mm -hmm. if I can't, I'll never tell you the truth then, right? Like once you've been in a relationship for a few years, you can tell the problems in the deck. Like you can tell what's predictable about the yeah. two of you. Yeah. Right. So you need to have a, you know, kind of an upstream conversation with your friend mm -hmm. about, Hey, I noticed that I love you madly. And I want to be able to say things to you that may be like, you don't want to hear them from me. Or if I say them to you, they could change and influence you in a way that I don't know if I feel comfortable. Right. So yeah. when it comes to love life, career, 
anything. Do you feel like I should say everything and anything and you'd be mad at me if I didn't? You want me not to? Like, you need to ask him now. You're, you're like, mm. Lauren, will he know I'm talking about the car? <laughs> will he know? Ready? <laughs> yeah, he will like you will. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, you know. So I, you're not, you're probably not that good a secret keeper. Right? Like he can slightly see your face. Yeah. Right? He can tell maybe. So um, if he, if y'all are really close, you should have that fight. You should have that level of agreement. Right? So it's true that once, so I, I can be considered a bully. Oh, <gasps> no. How come? Because I'll fire you if you don't follow my instructions. Oh yeah, I mean I get that. I wouldn't consider that being a. I wouldn't consider that being a bully though. I I really I have a lot of respect for people that you know you you talk about this the speaking the truth you know like being able to just say what is the truth and I I think that it has more to do with the the contract or the agreements that we have or don't have with people is what you're saying. It's like if that if you're not stating what your can and can'ts are at the beginning and it's like we can we can agree to disagree you know i I can say okay i'm i'm sorry that you feel that way this is how i feel but i love you anyway thank you for telling me and i think that people at the end of the day will walk their own path but i feel like the the what what was going to keep back to your point what's going to keep it from turning toxic is the fact that you were able to express yourself Yes. And make agreements, right? Yeah. Make agreements. agreements. So with one of my sisters, you know, so I'm, and I'm also, you know, everybody's boss. (laughs) So I'm like, you know, I have too much power. Right. And so if I say something, you're allowed to look at me like I am scary, whether it was scarily said or not. Right. So then with one of my sisters, there's a rule, right? She is, she is allowed to have a handicap. Okay. Like, you know, like a golfer's. Yeah, yeah. Like she has a handicap that if she even says, Lauren, like, like my big sister, she's my big sister. Like if she even like mumbles into sister lane, like bumps the, the rudder into yeah. sister lane, like Lauren, I have a promise that she's allowed to have her handicap and I must get sweet. I am not allowed to be like, wait a minute, I'm the boss. I'm allowed to say this as I'd like, right? Like, wait a minute, I just called to ask you a question. You don't get to get fucking defensive with me. I didn't even do anything. Like, that would be my normal tone. Like, wait a minute, I'm calling because I caught something. I'm, I, I swear I pay everyone's salary, Uh-huh. right? And I'm allowed to catch something. You don't get yeah. to be defensive and blame who, right? Like, so imagine that goes down. And then obviously I'm still giggling while I'm doing this because I'm not really mad, but she's like, oh, you baby shit, right? Yeah. She goes back into my big sister role, right? Yeah. Like, how dare you talk to me, right? And so we have an agreement that she's allowed to pull the sister card. And I really, I love being good at my own ability to change. Yes. Right? Like, I'm a change junkie. I'm a, like, ask me to be nicer and I'll be nicer for a minute. Like, I, I'm good with all that shit. Yeah. So then I, we put in agreements. So in your relationship with, so we have that agreement, right? And anyone in my company is allowed to ask for it. Because now mm. everyone knows that bully, Lauren could sound like a bully. Mm. And then if someone wants to call me out, like, I get scared of you. It's not really your fault, but yes, it's your fault, right? We agree. Yeah. They're allowed to be like, you're scaring me, right? Yeah. And I, I'm sorry. You're right. I am intense. Let me back that down. Okay. So it looks like, <laughs> it looks like you, you spelled that wrong. Yeah. Right? And so we can yeah. both giggle, right? Right. So anyway, it's a simple point that everyone doesn't have the right, if, and if you're having trouble in one of your relationships and you'd even call it toxic, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. what I hear is, wow, there's nine to, four to nine things that happen in our dynamics together that we've never really discussed or resolved with each other on how to handle it and do workarounds mm. or accept that I'm not allowed to talk to you about that, right? So you could have someone, you can't talk to them about, their weight, 
you, you know, they're, they have a history with bulimia and they don't want anything that you can't touch that subject. Mm -hmm. They have a therapist, right? So there, there are many topics and parts in a relationship that need to be teased out to, but you can't tease it out until you go have a conversation with your buddy and go, Hey, I am awkward or uncomfortable talking about these things. Do you mm -hmm. wish, are there things we've never talked about you wish we could talk about? Are there, th there is for me. Yeah. Right. And do, am I allowed to say it? The other thing that's happening is because you won't tell him what you're holding against him with his girlfriend or boyfriend mm -hmm. is you then don't get to make a difference in his or her life. Mm. Right. So what you saw the other night, the other day, right. Might be in the middle of a continuum of you didn't even see what she was really yelling at. Did you? Right. He was on his, you know, he was jerking off and it was the third time that day. Right. Like we don't know what I know. I'm being extreme, right? um, but we don't know what the story really is. Yeah. So you're having a lot of assumptions. Yeah. And how you even frame the conversation, which is like, you know, in Handel land, we have lots of scripts mm. for how to have difficult conversations. Yeah. And the best secret framing of how to have a difficult conversation is go, okay, I think I might be in my head about our relationship. I think there's stuff going on in my mind. I don't even know if it's true. I don't even know what you think about it. I don't even know if I have any permission to say, but let me just have a mind dump, mom, dad, best friend, coworker. Mm -hmm. And let me check what I'm worried about or my theory or what I'm upset about. And you tell me what to think after I tell you what I'm thinking. I'm not attached to what I'm thinking. I'm just letting you know what I'm thinking. Yeah. And then we'll figure out how to resolve it. Yeah. So when you own your part first and you ask the question, like what happened, set me straight. What do you think? It works every time. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Um, and I think it's, it's key to be able to navigate that situation. So I'm definitely going to do that because I feel Excellent. like the, that's the best way. And it makes me feel good to be able to express it in that way. And yeah. it sets parameters and it gives him the space. So thank you for that. So yes. just to, to now let's transition into um, this question about how do we, so let's say we, ha we are in a toxic relationship. We have a toxic relationship. I realized that this is one of the one somebody on Facebook posted this. Yeah. Um, I've, I've had a best friend since high school and I'm 36 and now she has turned into a different person. I feel like I can't have the same conversations with her because it, she makes me feel guilty about my own success. She's currently not where she wants to be in her life. And I feel like I can't express all the, all the, ups I'm like is it oops or ups all the ups in my in my life yes. without her sounding negative I feel yep. like I've I've been uh, I've t been talking to her a lot less in the last two years and I don't even feel like we're real friends anymore not sure what to do okay so what you just described is you move someone from first or second tier to third tier that's all the now you're like Lauren has that ever happened to you I'm like yes I had a wonderful friend who I love for many years I've known her for since I was in my early 20s and now I'm headed for 50 and um and we went through about uh, like a like a ser a serious problem with her actually being the same thing she got depressed she got unhappy she mm -hmm. went from being a rock star in her life to not so much, right? She gained a lot of weight. She started doing a lot of needed help self-medicating, right? Mm -hmm. And she was like, she, you know, got divorced, got, like, no matter what I did, I couldn't make a difference with her. Mm -hmm. And she was Debbie Downer. Mm. And even worse, you think I wanted to tell her any good news? Right. And so I had a very honest conversation with her. But the reason I had an honest conversation with her was because I wanted to save her. Mm. And I wanted to love her. And I wanted to tell her how it's been for me. Like, I love you. I love you madly. I'm, you and I are going to be friends forever. But 
I, I can't have you out of dinner because you're, you're sour, right? And no one wants to tell good news. Like you're pretty depressing. Yeah. I don't consider you depressed. I consider you depressing mm -hmm. because I've seen you really be great and you're eating like crap and you're doing like, this is, I'm sorry, I'm going to keep you forever, but I'm not inviting you to this party. I'm not going to have you here. Like, unless you're happy, I can't have you around. I can't. And unless you're like dealing with your life powerfully, you know, I don't care if you're 300 pounds sitting over there, if you're happy. Mm -hmm. right? You sitting over there and sulking and eating a bag of potato chips, I'm going to die, right? Like that's like against my religion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like I can't handle mm -hmm. it. So what should we do? Because these are my problems with you. You tell me how to deal. So again, she rose to the occasion, owned it, stopped coming around mm -hmm. and, and went to a therapist and started to get help and like really started to deal with herself. And, and she knew I loved her. And then she knew it was me to tell her. Okay. Now I'll tell you another story, but a bad one. Mm. That was a good one. Bad one. I, I, you know, cause I, I meet a lot of people and then I make a lot of friends. I had some real, I have some real deal breakers in my relationships of intimate, important relationships. Mm. Ready? Mm -hmm. I could ask you any question. You can ask me any question. And if there is things that are off limits, we're probably not meant to be friends. <laughs> Got it. That, it took me a long time to understand what a freak guy was. Right? I don't care what your answer is. I care that you'll answer. Right. Okay, now maybe I'll care that your answer is funny or interesting or cool. I like you in the first place. But it's really important to me that you know how to tell the truth and you're not embarrassed. Even if you hate what you're talking about, you're still proud to share the truth about you. So I had a friend who didn't want to deal with certain things. Mm -hmm. And then me pushing in on it was like a nightmare for me and for her. Mm -hmm. But there really are deal breakers in relationships. If you can't talk about your deal breaker, it's toxic. Mm. How toxic? You already moved your friend, the person who wrote this, to tier three. Mm -hmm. But if you would like to love her or commit to her or get her back to a B or an A group, you'll have to tell her the truth. Mm. Or if you want to get rid of her altogether, you would tell her the truth anyway, which is, you've re you know, this is how this feels for you because now you're withholding that information. Mm -hmm. And then she doesn't, she does. So when, if someone walks up to me and says, you know, you're, and then fill in the blank, right? And I believe them if, and I was upset about what the fill in the, you know, thing was. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's called how you make a difference in someone. Mm. If I tell you, I think you could get such a better job than the one you have, you'd be like, what do you think I should be doing, right? you know, oh, I think, I think you're letting your body go. <gasps> Where should, what should I be doing? Right? Like, so calling someone out is an act of love mm. in my book. What you're describing are people not calling each other out and wondering why the relationship gets toxic. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes total sense. I, I can see that. And I feel like that's, Mostly, I, this is where the, the scripts and knowing what your boundaries are come in because sometimes we just, we don't know how to have this conversation and so we just don't have it. And we're scared to have it. We're really scared. We're really chickens, right? We're really like, and we're chickens and we're blaming them, right? So yesterday I hung out, you know, I went to visiting day for my two kids in camp, right? Oh. And then I got to see my brother. And I, my brother and I have I overall loved my brother. He loves me. We're good. But if you took a look at my relationship with my sisters and then looked at my relationship with my brother, you would go, wow. <laughs> right? Like A, C, right? right? <laughs> like I know, how to, I know how to have a really great relationship. And then you're like, what's right. up with you and your brother? And I'm like, <laughs> right? Like, I don't care. And I don't care that I don't care. Do I have to care? Is it important? Mm -hmm. Right? Does that sound like Lauren Zander to anybody? <laughs> My husband was like, 
are you allowed to sound like that? And I'm like, no, <laughs> no. I'm like, we're just awkward. Yeah. We're just so awkward with each other. It's just not like deep. Like it, it has moments that have been epic with each other, but like great, like love him, miss him, want to go visit him. I'm like, right. right. And my other, right. So I, yeah. I just, and I don't, I don't know. And I'm like, is that kosher? And the answer is no. Oh. So then I'm not allowed in my book. I have excellent relationships where I told the truth about everything and I do my best. If they're on, like if they're in my, in one of my tears. Right. Right. So I can hear my ew, get on that. And you're like, Lauren, when will you take care of that? I'm like, you know, within this year, I will deal with my brother next time I see him. And it's not bad at all. Yeah. I'm not mad at him. I, he's not mad at me. There's nothing. It's just a little boring. Mm. So even that. Yeah. Even, so even, even bees can become better bees, right? Yeah. So the quality of your life depends on what you think you expect in your relationships and then demand of yourself. Yes. Okay. And if you're hating someone in your head, they don't know it. Oh, they don't know. It. If you don't like their boyfriend, they don't know it. You're blowing them off. They blame how workaholic you are. They don't go. She doesn't like me so much anymore. I'm such a complainer. Right. I promise that's not what your friend's saying. But if she wow. knew that's what she should stay, then she might really do something about it. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, so in a way we're not serving our own highest good when we're not telling the truth. It's all, it all just goes down to telling the truth. Doesn't it all roads lead? Yes. To and the they're truth. dangerous. They're dangerous because you have, and everyone goes like, I hate confrontation. Mm -hmm. And what is confrontation? You mean truth telling? You hate <laughs> truth telling? What's confrontation? What is it exactly? Confrontation is truth telling right? Yeah. Like every place you don't want to be confrontational, right. you literally don't want to deal with what the truth would bring out. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and I really like, and then I'm like, I don't need you to be confrontational. I need you to figure out a way to say it. So you're telling the truth without being confrontational, right? It's called intimacy and honesty, not confrontation. Yeah. Oh, I'm like, there's so much. And I feel like we're going to have to do another one of these, just maybe talking about how to get out because I feel like relationship toxicity can be, is it the same? Would it be considered the same? Or is that different when you're in actual, you're in love with somebody that is potentially toxic? Different different right Very that's what different. i think i think it's different. yeah no if we're talking about moment to moment employee like that happens when you have a boss right and it happens when you have a lover mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or someone in your or a child like a kid right someone yeah. who you like have a moment to moment relationship with that really matters it's not the yes. same thing as a friendship right or right so right and then how to deal moment to moment with someone. Yes. And how to own your dynamics. So there's a whole process in Handel Method that we do in coaching yeah. that is sorting out relationship dynamics in a workplace yeah. or in a partnership. Yes. It with lovers, partners. Yeah. Right. Where you, it, the funniest part is that you don't have 600 dynamics with another person, you don't have 400 different fights. Right. And just because you reside, it, it is not actually the game of whack-a-mole, you know, when it's like, yeah, it just something else keeps coming up. I'm like, no, actually same three things keep coming up. Mm. Um, it seems different today, but yeah. it's still about money. Right. So it's, it, there, it's actually very containable to mm. get your dynamics under new management. Oh, I'd love that. That's yeah. good. Dynamics under new management. And we've been doing that for over 20 years. Yeah. Right. Well, and so, and tell, tell me, so this is, I know this is part of the inner you platform. So yes. for the people watching this or listening, can you tell us about uh, how it works and how they can maybe find yeah. those tools within that platform? Okay. 
So one of my greatest dreams was to get all of my method into funny with examples, right? Of how to like, what is the content? Like, how does it, how, you know, what is it to understand your inner dialogue? And then how do I lay that out? And how do you like, so in the Handel method, there is like this, like 25 minute talks on what in God's name this concept is with examples and then go do your homework to get it. Right. And so I finally built, because thank God for technology, right. there is this epic ability to build a killer automated program, right? If you spend enough money and do it twice, actually, um, you'll be able to build a beautiful program that people, and then there, so anyway, so inner you is 12 sessions. That's that 25 minute a slot mm -hmm. with homework and it's interactive. What does that mean besides for that? It's pretty and cute and interesting and click and it saves all your work. Um, I teach a class. We have regular coaching. We put people together as buddies. You're like, why do I want a buddy? I'm like, can you imagine if you could practice difficult conversations with someone you from Texas? Right. Oh, you don't know Susan from Texas. She doesn't know you from, you know, uh -huh. LA. Right. And then you get a buddy and you're practicing, you're dealing. It's, it's so good for anyone who's actually serious about changing their actual life, not read a book and hope it change. Right. Those are not yeah. my people. Those yeah. People. And, and I really feel like the, the process is super helpful and the homework is really uh, manageable it's not like it's out of control and so for the people watching this or listening i highly recommend the program obviously i think lauren is an incredible coach she's also an incredibly gifted teacher and all the information in there is totally uh created in a way that's understandable the concepts the examples and um I think that we have something special for the people listening, the people watching. Yes, we do. So, President, you all, here's a gift. So, if you're, so I have been launching groups of people, right? So, Rosie's people, that's you people, right? Rosie, because we just want more excuses to connect with people and, <laughs> and, and hang out and make a difference together, right? Mm -hmm. So, so I invited Rosie to bring a gang of her people and open a course where Rosie and I can master class it, which means that, oh, so it takes about three to four months to do the whole program. So if you sign up for the program, you'll get Rosie and I, because it has a, a whole video component. So it's so cute. Everyone, like she's from Brazil, you can wave at each other. You can get buddies. You can instantly chat. It's a world. So come to our online class where we're live and streaming with each other and um, going through the whole process together. There's two ways to do this process. One is listen and audit it and see the difference it makes. And the other is do your goddamn homework, right? right? And both work. Okay, I don't like the guilt yourself to almost do most of your homework. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah, program, no. and I, and that I program have, has been retired. Yeah, and I have to say that for me, it wasn't until I actually started to do the homework that things yeah. actually started to change, um, yeah. you know? Yeah. And yeah. it depends on the type of learner you are, but I feel yeah. like the, the program is extremely uh, relatable. It's, it, it's easy to do. And, um, it's, it's, uh, structured in a way where you can, you know, go at your own pace. Yeah. Having the, having the community is a huge plus because I feel like that's, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to just shift and elevate consciousness on a communal level so that we can continue yeah. to do this work in a supportive way. And some of this work can actually be really hard. Mm -hmm. And I know that for me, you know, having Lauren and having the whole community and her whole tribe that she uh, has created in a very loving, not bully way. <laughs> I don't think you're a bully. I'm and, not, I admit my any form of bully. Yeah, look when at you her. Admit you're a bully. She's a truth teller. That's it. And that's why I love her. And that's yeah. why I respect her. And that's why I'm honored to be working with her. And for those of you that are listening to this and watching this, the links to uh, the interview course is going to be on the info button. If you're listening and if you're watching this on YouTube, you can go into the subject 
uh, box and all of those links will be on there as well. Uh, also any links to follow Lauren on and she's pretty active on all the platforms. So uh, get, get at her, get at her. She's ready for you. She's ready for all your questions. And um, yeah, so that's it. Stay in contact with us. If you haven't joined our Facebook group, uh, there is also a link for that. Uh, and there will be all of those links in our private Facebook to join uh, interview there as well. So, and then we're going to do a master class where Rosie's going to show up because you guys are going to be there. And then we're going to figure out because what happens when you're when I'm doing the master class is you all get to send in all your questions. All of them. I read all. We do a outline. I get all your homeworks. I actually am caring because I'm learning how to make even a better system over the next few years. And so it all comes from you guys. And so then um, and then we will craft. So I answer questions that you send it like it's really good. And then I always give new content. So I'm always practicing new shit. So Rosie and I will be playing with new stuff. Perfect. I swear. I, I swear too. I, I need playmates. Yes, yeah, she does. Let's do it. Let's all do it together, everyone. <laughs> um, so Lauren, one final question for you. Yeah. I've asked this to you in the past, and I'm curious if your answer has changed. So we'll mm -hmm. see. Uh, I'll also link the, uh, the interview that Lauren has done in the past on the show notes as well. So you can listen to our oh, prior conversations as well. Yes. Um, okay. So I created Radically Loved as a place for people to come for more information, to feel uh, supported by their community and to just feel that there is something greater that's going to allow us to achieve our highest good. Yes. So then uh, that's where Radically Loved comes from. So for you, how do you feel radically loved? You know, the older I get, the happier I am about getting older. And you're like, why? Everybody's awful about that. And I'm like, I'm not talking about my face or my butt or my butt or my body. No, I'm doing good. Um, I'm not talking about those things. I'm talking about getting much better at my job because I've done it for 20 years now. And I feel incredibly trusted, right? Like, so you'll come to me and we'll be working on something. And I feel like the older I get, the more I feel that I can deliver any dream to anyone. Oh. Right. So, and that really makes me feel radically loved. Mm -hmm. Right. So good. I, I really think I have the greatest job ever. Dang. You know, you say that every time and I love it. Really? I know. Yeah. And cause you believe it and it's true. And you are the greatest, the G O G O A T. You're the goat greatest of all time. Okay. I love you so much. Thanks for being right. here. And we keep finding new reasons to play together. That's right. More. Let's do it. Good. All right. All right, everybody. everybody. Who loves Thanks you. Thanks for watching. Bye.